Hey everyone, before we kick this episode off, I urge everyone listening to like and subscribe to our podcast, wherever you may get your podcast from. So if you listen to us on iTunes, please give us a five-star rating, or also subscribe to us on Spotify. And I urge all of our listeners to head to our website, and you can get more than just our podcast from there. We have news stories all the time there, we have feature articles there, so head to tnpmedia.au, that's tnpmedia.au. Alright, without further ado, we'll get stuck into the podcast. Talk and Power, your motorsport and motoring radio show. Now on 88.5 FM, the valley comes alive. And podcasting across iTunes and talkandpower.com.au. It's a Talk and Power podcast, episode 170, and I've got the guests back in the studio, Johnny Lardy over there and Todd Brinkworth over there. How are we, guys? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. A little bit weary, a little bit tired. Why? What have I'm, you been doing? I got up at 2.30 this morning so oh. just in case someone's listening if we do have any listeners <laughs> yeah, i was we are recording on monday the 14th of august i was up at 2 30 this morning yeah, that's to watch keen. yeah i was You're i was keen. keen i was yeah. i was i was into it i was i was it brought back memories of the times so i used to get up and watch the marcus ambrose races so i was i was i was into it i was so yeah no i was up and uh, I, you know what? I actually the race there was only one yellow. In case you don't know what we're talking about, this is the NASCAR Indy the Brickyard the Verizon 200 from the Brickyard. Now uh, we had New Zealander Shane Van Gisbergen and Brody Kostecki, Australian Brody Kostecki, West Australian Brody Kostecki competing. So I was up at two thirty, and uh, I actually went back to bed. To be honest, it finished. There was only one yellow, so it finished at five a.m. I said, you know what, I'll get another hour of sleep in. Actually, so. no, I can't go back to sleep. No, I managed, I managed to do it, eh? I'm, I'm going to go to work. I'm about to say, do you know what I call it, the Brickyard? Yes. Okay. We'll talk about that a bit later, actually. That's good. There yes. you go. But anyway, yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that shortly, actually. Um, what have you guys, I know, like, is it a, it's been a sporting weekend. If you're listening from another country, Australia has been gripped by Matilda Fever. Oh, yeah. Well, I was always on the bandwagon. I'm not one of those who yeah. just jumped on <clears throat> on the weekend. Um, we had the 75th anniversary at Perth Soccer Club, so we got to watch. Well, we we're supposed to be watching the league, but we we're all in the in the VIP area watching the the Matildas on the big screen while the the league team was uh, playing. So, so can I? Can you just explain that? So you got the keys back at some point. You had to hand the keys over, didn't you, to what one you of the teams, the the whole club. You've got the keys back to okay. the club? I, I'm missing something here. Really. Didn't you say that you had the, the whole Perfitalia had to give the ground to one of the girls? Oh, no, no, yeah, to FIFA, to FIFA themselves. To FIFA, yeah, yeah. So uh, while the World Cup was, or while the team was based here, I think three or four teams were based here. So, yeah, the, the Perth Soccer Club or Doran Gardens, mm. um, yeah, uh, literally, yeah, hand over the keys to FIFA for, yep. I think it was six weeks. Mm -hmm. So we got them back, yeah, technically on um, just on, on the weekend, I suppose, and not just past. So yeah, okay. this was our first game back. Mm -hmm. At the club in like a couple of months, so yeah, and, okay. and and we celebrated, uh, coincidentally celebrated the seventy fifth anniversary of the Perth wow. Soccer Club and all the accolades over the years, and um, yep. yeah, we got so we had a function for lunch um, at about one o'clock to 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 celebrate, and we were playing Kingsway Olympic, a local club here mm -hmm. um, as well, and uh, yeah, so the league kicked off, and I was sort of watching them for about. A minute or two, and then yeah, things started to ramp up behind me. So mm. yeah, all focus switched to the to the big screen and and, yeah. and the girls, which was it was fantastic. It was a good atmosphere because obviously you're surrounded by mm. you know uh, football heads. Yeah. I'm not going to say soccer heads because mm -hmm. uh, I'll get in trouble. Yeah, they're all yeah. Fo football heads, mad football heads, and and to be in that sort of uh, you know, I mean, obviously being at the game would have been yeah. ideal, but I think being in Anyway, being at one of the big screenings or anything like that, mm. um, yeah, it's a great atmosphere. So yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome. 
I was actually at Optus Stadium, so I went How to was go. That? Yeah, it was it was awesome. Like, so I went to watch the Derby, which was a train wreck. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but prior to the game, like, so it was the penalty shootouts, and they were shot on the big screen. And just as Frio ran out on the ground, they switched to the Frio running out, and even the Frio fans were booing at the at the screen, like <laughs> asked, demanding that they go back to the Matildas. So they did. They quickly switched back to the Matildas. The Eagles ran out. They never switched. The, they never turned <laughs> the screen off. And uh, yeah, how magnificent that that was! Awesome, you know, it was yeah. quite a big crowd. There was still a large contingency over at the Canfield, and there was still a lot of people outside watching on the big screen out there, but. Most people were too scared to move from where they were in case they were going to miss something. There'd be no hurry going into that game on the Saturday. No, there was absolutely no hurry. Like, I mean, I thought we were on there for a bit, the first two goals, but then after that it was all one-way traffic. That's another story. Again, in case someone hasn't realised, this is a motorsport podcast, but last two last two episodes you've kicked off with... I don't know. Other sausages other, or yeah, sausages uh, so- or, yeah. or football. We actually had some feedback about the sausages. Some people liked that. Yeah. So... It's good to hear. It's good to hear we're doing something a little bit different, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. How about yourself, Todd? Did you catch the game? I didn't catch much of it. I, but it was funny. My auntie has been ringing me and telling me the results, and she's been staying up late and watching it. And then I've actually watched some highlight packages, and again, I'll, I'm quite enjoying it. Like it's, it's good to watch, and it's good to see Australians doing well in football. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, it certainly is. Yeah. And it's nice when you have someone else in the family that's. You know, watching all the game. Oh, did you see this happen? You see, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I did. Like someone else would talk about it too. So, were you the guy like watching Harry Potter on the plane? Did you see that? There was a there was a someone took a video on, <laughs> a, on a flight. Not quite, and all the no. TV screens were on the Matildas. Yeah, except for one person was watching Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was quite amusing. In other big news, we need to probably talk about it. I, I, as I said, I was excited. I was a bit. I was. I was. I was really looking forward to this. This is a, I guess, a call out to live events in Perth that are showing events on other parts of the world. I could not find anywhere that was showing this race. Even though it was two thirty in the morning, I kind of get it. But not not even the Crown Casino was showing this race live. So. I don't know. I thought it would have been good to get together. I'm sure that if you went there, you say, hey, mate, just flick it over. Like, it's, it was <laughs> yeah. on Teo. Because Teo put it on. Yeah. Uh, you know, a bit, well, for this for for, for this uh, for this weekend anyway. Yeah. So. so I caught it on Foxtel, and the coverage was absolutely awesome. It was really good. Mm. And Shane Van Gisbergen got a lot of coverage, a lot of coverage. Not so much Brody, but Shane Van Gisbergen got a heap of TV coverage. They actually went to him. So, you know, when they come out, the cars come out on the warm-up lap. Generally speaking, in NASCAR, they'll do three, four laps uh, under this, behind the safety car before the race starts. And they actually had a chat with him. He cheerio to everyone in New Zealand and Australia watching. Good morning, everyone over there. It was really good. He got a lot of TV coverage. Uh, unfortunately, for those that don't know the results, um, it, it, Shane finished 10th in the end. Uh, he had a sticking throttle, so I'm not quite sure how that played out. Uh, it wasn't playing out well, obviously. The throttle yeah. was sticking. So he couldn't get modulation on the throttle. It was either flat out or not not enough. So he was kind of going through the tyres quite heavily. And Brody Kostecki finished 22nd. The one thing I will say is that those guys still finished ahead. It was kind of a uh, a big field of international drivers. So we had Shane Van Gisbergen, Brody Kostecki. We had our Rockefeller from uh, Germany. Jensen Button was racing as well. Oh, wow. He was in the race. Kubiashi from Japan as well, for ex-Formula One yeah. driver. He was in the race as well. And Daniel Suarez, he's from Mexico. He's a regular in NASCAR, so... Of the internationals, uh, Daniel Suarez was, uh, I think he came third or fourth. And, um, no, he came third, sorry. And, you know, SVG 10th, Brody 22nd, and the rest of the internationals behind him. So I thought it was a magnificent effort. For those that don't know, um, Brody actually had to change cars on the Sunday, the day of the race. So that was the backup car. Oh, Not okay. quite sure they had an issue in qualifying with the race car. So it wasn't his. It wasn't in the car that he had practiced in. Interesting. Brody wasn't given any. We talked about Shane Van Gisbergen getting the practice, the special practice 
in the lead up to the Chicago race, uh, Brody wasn't showing that. Mm. I think there was a lot of feedback from Shane's um, practice, so he wasn't able to get that. Um, so yeah, I just made a note of that. Brody wasn't allowed is, testing. Is that not? Is that not allowed? No, generally, generally? speaking, no, no. For so when card? yeah. So when Shane got it, there were some questions raised as to why he got that special dispensation. But anyway, Brody wasn't to get that. Um, and nineteenth on the truck run on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Saturday. No, what is that? Saturday morning. Yeah. Yeah, Saturday morning, Friday night. Yeah. There. Mm. So I think he was a bit disappointed with that. To be honest, I don't think he was expecting. Um, I don't think he was expecting. I was thinking the way I was reading him, I think he was hoping to finish on the lead lap. So 19th was a... He was basically the first of the lap down cars. It was 10 laps from the end, I think. Wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also, he'd also received a lucky dog uh, drive-by as well, or, uh, you know, where they wave him around prior to that oh, as well. Okay, so, yeah. yeah, his truck run probably wasn't as successful as what his debut in Chicago was a few weeks ago. It's interesting these commentators for this race made a note near the end of the race. That they, they really highlighted on these international drivers. And the one thing they did say was, you know, Shane came over here, it was seven weeks ago, and won that Chicago race. They felt that um, it's difficult for these guys to come here, and they, they do well on road courses, but predominantly the ovals are, are what you've got to be good at. Mm. And yeah. they feel that these guys still need a bit of work on their oval work. So they believe that... Which is, I think that's understandable, yeah. isn't it? I don't yeah. think everyone yeah. was anyone expecting anything, about it, anything more. Yeah. I just feel, I think they felt the need to say that these guys aren't going to get the walk-up necessarily in, in other events. Maybe road courses, but not in other events. So mm. it's going to be hard work for Shane Van Gisbergen because he's committed basically to... Well, it, by the sound of it, you know... Triple Eight have already signed Will Brown, and so obviously something's he's on the. He's gone. Like, he's gone. Yeah. So, so yep. you know, what I mean, the deal. Some some deal has been done. Mm. Surely. Mm. Yep. Yep. So that was interesting as well. The Will Brown. We'll that talk was. about that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah. Anyway, that was the NASCAR debut of of um, Shane Van Gisbergen and, and Brody. Kost- no, it wasn't the debut for Shane Van Gisbergen, but it was Brody Kostecki's. Um, I don't know, 22nd, I was pretty happy with that, given that he was starting, he was racing in a practice car or a backup car. I think he did reasonably well. Um, well and, and finished the race, let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. And you the Sunday mean? race was a, is an oval, yeah? No, no, it was a road, 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 road circuit, yeah. So, yeah, it was 14 or 15 corners. It's it's pretty elaborate road circuit, too. It's part here. of the circuit yeah. as well, but don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, and uh, they got away with two pit stops as well. So, nice. Very, very good race. What else have I got here? International drivers. Yep, SVG. Yeah, had lots of commentary. Commentators suggesting he's going to need a lot more oval track experience. Um, in the end, sorry, we didn't say one. Michael McDowell, congratulations to him on winning the race. He is a bit of a road course expert. Chase Elliott came came home in second and Daniel Suarez in third. So it was great to see Michael McDowell. Had him won since the Daytona 500 in 2021. That was his debut victory. And uh, this is his second win. So those, to be honest with you, those three were really out. And uh, Tyler Reddick as well, I can put in there. Those, those four really had the pace, set the early lead. Uh, Danny Hamlin won the first stage only because they went long, I mean long, on their first um, first fuel stop. So, no, sorry, Danny Hamlin won the second stage. Uh, I think Michael McDowell won the first stage, but they pitted after that. But Danny Hamlin was managed to stay out there for 33 laps, and, yeah, it's quite a long, long, lengthy run and won the second stage, but then they were kind of out of the race after that, so... Really interesting. So, I, if anyone's listening out there, um, <laughs> show these races live. I reckon it would have been good to get a bit of a get together, you know? Yeah. Maybe head today off, but I feel all right today. I'm not that bad. Bit tough Monday morning. Yeah, yeah true. All right. Maybe Come do your on, races man. on a on a Saturday instead. It's like, but you know, we just talked about football before. There's a lot of people that get up and watch Premier League. Yeah. Internationals, yeah. you know yep. what I mean? Yeah, no, that's so right. It's, yeah, it's... That's right. No, no, definitely. While we're talking all things um, 
racing uh, why don't we switch over to oh, i've got my notes here i'm all over the place sports sedan from a couple of weeks ago um a good set of hills shown by jordan caruso in that mm. in that audi that audi uh at uh queensland raceway i didn't know did you know that that audi was the darren hossack audi from many years ago oh really it's, I the, same, that it's the same car <laughs> oh, i didn't know, know that yeah, either didn't know that. Until yeah i was watching the commentary and they said it's the same car so those two cars it's have been the dominant cars of the yeah. past what, a couple of decades yeah, yeah yeah i mean how how quick was that out yeah, that it thing it was good. like he was yeah. out there you know um tony good race from tony mm-hmm. um it was great to see the alphas kind of back i mean they're they're up there it was a strong second uh, by all yeah, accounts yeah. i mean I, th- I thought he he ran well but jordan caruso yeah that car was kind of out on its own wasn't it really mm-hmm. Do you catch it at all, Todd, at all, in the sports sedan? No, again, just all highlights yeah. and what I've read online. I always just seem to miss the race for some, some reason. So I was but, under the illusion that these the, the TCR race and the sports sedan were running together uh, last weekend. Well, but I it was two yeah. separate weekends. Well, obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a different series. Oh, I don't know. Trophy I don't know how, series. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Mm. Yeah, it's a different yeah, series. Yeah. So. yeah. I think at Bathurst is the next time the sports sedans are up. Yeah, mm. yeah. But, yeah, it was um, it was quite interesting. A bit of a fire there as well. I can't remember from one of the cars at the end there. It was quite, a, quite an extensive fire. Um, so, speaking of Queensland Raceway, did you guys catch the TCR at all this weekend? That's, I'll put my hand up and watch it at yeah, all. Yeah, no, I watched a bit of that one, um, which is it's funny. We should talk about Bill Brown, and he, he won... Um, two of the three races and yep. qualified on pole. Mm, yeah, yep. so mm. it was a strong showing from Tony as well, Delberto. Am I right? Did, uh, he, did he? Yes, place? I yeah. think uh, he had a he had a bit of a punt. He, um, I think he punted something off in the third race. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yep. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was good to see Will Brown. Well, while we're talking Will Brown, then mm. I guess there's a bit that's, of Will Brown going around this there's, week. There's a lot of Will Brown going around. <laughs> That one caught me off guard. Did you guys see that one coming? Yeah, I, I think knew... it happened so quick, didn't it? Like yeah. it was like a rumor, and then it was like a done deal within twelve hours. Yeah. So the rumor was propagated by the journo that had the story, basically, from what I understand. One of the Speed Cafe journos, I've forgotten his name, but he had the story. He and uh, I believe that he propagated the rumor, and and <laughs> off it went. Yeah. Um, interesting. Betty was pivotal in that, Betty Klaminko, for those that don't know who I'm talking about. Do you think... I, she's a lovely lady. Do you think she's done the right thing? Or should she have stuck to her guns and kept him, held him to his contract? Well, the thing is, Nick, I mean, you've got Brody Kostecki racing in, over in NASCAR now, and now you're going to, you know... You've got two drivers that are sort of, you know, I mean... I've always sort of said, um, because I've heard her, heard her speak on a few podcasts, and she's always sort of said that they're happy for the, you know, to bring these young guys up and, you know, let them, you know, go. And she knows that they're not the team that, you know, is the, is the end point in their career. But I don't know. You want to, well, you, you want to hold on to one of these guys. So. Yeah. Well, they kind of like. I mean, it's always been Erebus has always been perceived as the stepping stone to yeah, the. Yeah, but they're leading the, the championship. They're at leading the, the championship. So they are. The, Barry yeah. Ryan is quite well. From what I understand, he's not happy. I think he's well within his right to be not happy. They're not the stepping stone anymore. They're the. They're, they're, but they in are saying it. that now, if you're at the top of your game in terms of car and speed and all that, do you get not that you're going to get a better driver? But if these guys go. It's a it's a better incentive for someone like a, a seasoned or a more yeah. experienced or you mm. know someone else to come into the team too. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that as well. I understand. But what who you're saying. Who, do you, who? Let's just say they both go. Who who would you get? I think at David Reynolds and that's his time's done. It he's on the decline, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should really say that. We just. <laughs> <laughs> but he's looking, isn't he? He's well, still, he's, yeah, he's, he's set he's, to go to Team Eighteen. Yeah, which is a bit weird. Yeah, it is. It is. But yeah, I, I don't know what's happening there. But yeah, I, this one caught me off guard. I wasn't, I didn't see this one coming. And but in saying that, I couldn't think of a likely replacement for Shane. Yeah. Really, um, Chaz. Or Cam were really it, Cam Waters or or Chaz Mostert, and mm. I think Chaz is contracted still, and Cam, 
I well, I think th- they both had a, another year to go, and I think the plan was, well, ideally, you know, you know, hopefully Shane was going to stick around for another year, but that's obviously not going to happen. So. No, no, no. Well, mm. Deep Pasquale, he's probably the only. I mean, he, but he, he and Davison just signed, I think, didn't they? Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah, so. yeah. I don't know if Andre's currency is that great, and <laughs> I don't know if DT, uh, DJR has done his currency any any well. Yeah, not, I don't know. Uh, it's mm. not. He's, he's. I mean, he's a you, talented driver. You thought driver. he was going to be the next McLaughlin, didn't you? The way he was coming yeah. up, but yep. didn't, it hasn't turned out. But he he came from. Well, he did he come from? Did he see? No, where did he come from? Uh, Andre. Yeah, he he came. Yeah, he came from Erebus. Yeah, yeah, from Erebus. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's that's interesting. But it was a different era of us back then. Yeah, yeah. And also, it was a different DJR back yeah, then. Yeah, it was a Penske DJR. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and who's coming up? Super Two. Uh, I, I, Kai, Kai Allen, but I think DJR will get their hands on him on Kai Allen. Yeah. Well, they already have for the. They've got him as a wild card with simona de silvestra well you got you got uh what about uh seaton boy you got seaton coming yeah aaron up. oh aaron's yeah. coming through and also there's zach best as well he will he will have to get uh drive uh drive somewhere mm. next year you, you can't imagine i'm actually surprised zach didn't get a drive this year mm. in the, the top tier but uh yeah a lot of talent as well but yeah i'm i'm assuming he'll get a drive somewhere do you think it'd be harder for because Stecky to leave now because obviously Will's gone. You want to hold on to at least him. I think I think Brody's invested in the championship here, winning one at least. If he doesn't get it done this year, I think he'll hang around to try and do one. Um, but I, I can see him winning it this year. I don't know what's going to happen over. I think he's got some pretty good contacts over there in the US. But do you want to go? He's going to have to go Xfinity or truck at the very least. Mm. Um, to kick off and maybe he doesn't want to do that I don't know I really don't know it'd be interesting to see what the West Australian does so it's yeah. um, crazy crazy times in, in supercars and the parody stuff is just not going away that's, <laughs> that's actually gaining a fair well, bit of money it's sad that the now. most exciting bit of the supercars is the driver movement yeah which is pretty sad yeah yeah yeah, yeah it is but it's even sadder to think that, you know, this parody issues doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. Well, it can't. How can yeah. it go away when the results are the way they are? Mm. They are, um, but if they don't do something soon, unfortunately. Um, people have a lot less patience in 2023. Let's think back to 1999 <laughs> or 2000 when we had the AU Falcons. They were absolute rubbish, those cars. Yeah. And for three years they were on. Well, they weren't. Comp- the AU was never competitive at all. No, it wasn't until the BA rolled out. Yeah, the AU was, but it, it, it Paul Radisich had, had a few had wins. Its, yeah, it had its moment, and it was quick at Bathurst as well. Mm. You yep. know what I mean? It got, uh, I think, Paul, if not once or twice. Yeah, yeah. And Craig yeah. Lowndes was fairly competitive in an AU. Yeah, but um, yeah. Do we remember the VP Commodore when the VP Commodore debuted? That wasn't that competitive either. Uh, compared to the EB, the EB had those little winglets on the front, and that made it quite. You know, I just remember that, yeah. yeah. But these are the. But we had a lot more patience yeah. back then. I don't know if we had patience, but we didn't have social but media it was back still then. Still mixed, Nick. Like you weren't getting the same guy. Mm. <clears throat> you weren't getting the same guy winning every weekend. It was still yeah. mixed. There was still a win there for those cars mm-hmm. somewhere along the line. You know, yeah. Yeah, um, there's no wins, and mm. it doesn't look like it will be no. anytime soon. No, no. No, it doesn't. So it's going to be a long year for the Ford fans, anyway. And really, for the amount of effort that's gone into the current series of cars, it's a shame that Ford are so far behind. I, I mean, this, this, I won't mention the person I spoke with, but I spoke with a DP at Ford, mm-hmm. and it's not the one you think; it's another one. <laughs> so, you know, it's not the one you're thinking; it's another one. <laughs> And there have been, he's told me of discussions that have, it's, it's not looking good. It's not good at all. So if we go back now, you know how we, everyone was saying, oh, you know, mm. it's taking so long, it's, you know, and then they've rushed it or whatever. Do, in hindsight, would you thought if they waited another season, would it have been closer or better for Prob- the parity situation? Probably not, no. Would it have made a difference? No, I don't think so. More testing? 
Maybe. Or a roll out or a roll out at, you know. Half half. Yeah, have half. It's difficult to do that, but yeah, I don't know how you would have done that either, but half half. But I, don't, I honestly don't know the answer to that. But all I, what I can tell you is that things are not looking good in the Ford camp and they, they, they're losing patience quicker than... I don't think things are looking good in supercars in general. Yeah, no. yeah. But if they lose Ford, that that's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot. Well, it'll become a GT class then, won't it? Johnny will get his wish. <laughs> I'm looking at Johnny, Johnny Smirk, and <laughs> I knew exactly what you were thinking as well. <laughs> it's interesting. I don't know which way they're going to go, but that's what they've. You so know. I think I think it, it will prevail. It will. It will. It will but I'm, I'm hopefully it uh, it, it changes. Quicker, <clears throat> uh, you know, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so too. I'll take a Bathurst win if it means you know yeah. extra set of tyres. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or I've said it before, nostalgia supercar. Done. Well, they always say Bathurst is the is the neutral, isn't it? Mm. It sort of doesn't matter sometimes yeah. whether you, you know one car's better than the other. It's more of a driver yeah. circuit. Mm. Yeah. So it could be, you know, you know, there could be an opportunity. October eight beckons, boys. October eight beckons. Well, also you've got Sandown this year. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which I... Sandown's back. Yeah, that is back, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Sandown actually. Yeah, I, I, I like Sandown. Yeah. It should oh. never have gone, really. No, I can't well, wait for Sand. Is that all be? I think it's only got a couple of years left in it, but isn't it? It's yeah, only ha- like it's only the housing it, development, and then they'll move to the new yeah. complex, won't they? Yeah. That yeah. One? yeah, yeah. There's been a big push to not have racing at Sandown. The, oh. the real estate yeah. is quite valuable. Motorsports in built-up areas just doesn't work anymore. Hmm. Not unless they're one-off events, like a street to- sort of event. Yeah. You know, we're lucky Wanneroo Raceway is where it is. But, but even then, yeah, it's, um, those it's, houses aren't oh, they're knocking. Away. They're and knocking. There's, there's a lot of people complaining there mm. too. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, I don't know, guys. I don't know the answer oh. to that. I do not know. Hey, we're going to take a short break here, and when we get back, we're going to talk. We're going to do a movie review, which we have ne- haven't done before. Have we done a movie review? Yeah, yeah we've done it we've ages done ago. What are we doing? Come on, guys. Come, come on. Like an old guys, movie, yes. but this is a new movie. Oh, well, here we are. No, we know. We did Ford versus, versus, Ford versus Holden. Oh, Ford, uh, Ford, okay. Ford versus Holden. <laughs> Ferrari. Johnny's, Johnny's making a new movie, Ford versus Holden. He's going to make the uh, yeah. the movie about, hundred. you know, what, 50 years of racing yeah. at Bathurst. Let's get on it, Johnny. We'll make it, eh? All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> when we get after the break, we're going to have a, do a movie review of Gran Turismo right after this. We hope you're liking this podcast. If you are, head to our iTunes or Spotify um, podcast channel and like and subscribe to us there. Also, head to our website, tnpmedia.au. You can get all of our episodes, every single one we've ever recorded from our website there as well. There's also a heap of YouTube content, so head to our YouTube channel and subscribe to us there. That's Talking Power. Wherever you get us, make sure you like and subscribe us there. Uh, we can really do with the, uh, the subs. Thanks, everyone. Now, back to the second half of the podcast. It didn't work out well, did it? For those that are listening, we're actually trying to cut in all the intros and the music. Now, rather than doing it post-production, I'm um, trying to do it on the on the hop here, but that <laughs> that didn't work. hundred. It's only taken me 170 episodes to do that. But anyway, Nick's trying to get get out of doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey Nick, we're going to review this movie. It'd be good if we actually watched it. Well, I'll just give you a brief on it. I'll give you a brief. I went and saw it Friday night. I took my youngest son because he's he's into gaming. If you're into gaming, did you know? I, I remembered when this happened. Did you? Do you remember when it happened? Yeah, I've 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 seen like I'm going to go watch this movie because uh, me and my son are into this sort of stuff. Yeah. I, I play like you do as well. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I know about the uh, the whole um, competition and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I'll let you. So basically, when was it? Was it 2016 around there? Somewhere uh, around there. They've actually had several, but the main one they're talking about is 2016. Yeah. So there's a competition, PlayStation, Gran Turismo. The winner, like they had a series of events and the winner would get a drive. At the, well, they took 15 kids around the world and they took them basically to the GT Academy, Nissan GT Academy. And there they took one winner out of that. And then that... that person got a drive in the gt 
um, GT3 category. They had to they had to finish fourth in six races, at least finish fourth to get their FI, FIA license, and then they were then they uh, then they were off. So, um, and then they got to compete in Le Mans as well. So it's the true story of his name is uh, Jan Mar- uh, Martinborough. I, I think that's how you say his name, Jan Martinborough. Um, young fellow, play, gamed heaps and uh, got really good at it. Mm-hmm. And uh, participated in this. So Jerry Halliwell plays his mother in the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Or Jerry uh, Horner. I don't know what name she goes by. <laughs> but anyway, she's Gin- she's in the ginger movie. Ginger Spice. Yeah, gin- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was Ginger, wasn't <laughs> yeah, ginger she? Spice, yeah, Ginger Spice. Ginger Spice. <laughs> and David Barbara, a uh, Harbour. Sorry, he those. Anyone watch Stranger Things? Yeah, yeah. The what's his what's his name in Stranger Things? Oh. Can't remember. No, yeah, go on. He's the police. He's the sheriff. He's yeah. the sheriff in Stranger Things. He's the head engineer, and Orlando Bloom's in it as well. Yeah. He's the marketing man from Nissan. Really great movie. Really good. Uh, really well put together. A lot, a lot of CGI, but also a lot of real driving scenes as well. Cool. So Jan actually uh, acted. He was a stunt double for himself in the movie uh, <laughs> in a number of scenes as well. Uh, they all seem to be using genuine. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. But they seem to be using genuine Nissan GDRs in there. The Le Mans car, I can't tell you if that was a genuine car, but a lot of the shots that at the in the in the closing half hour of the movie where he participates in Le Mans seem to be from Le Mans itself. Mm-hmm. So they actually, you know, the flyover and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So just to, you know, I didn't know this. This has nothing to do with the movie, but. A, so Nissan is is not a Skyline GDR. It's just a Nissan GDR, right? Yeah, the thirty fives. Yes. Yeah, it's just the thirty fives. Yes. Because I put a post up of a thirty five the other day, and I wrote Skyline GDR, and I got told it's just a GDR. It's not a Skyline. Did you know that, Nick? No, no, I didn't. Know I, see, I missed that one. I would have told you off too. I always <laughs> thought that it was a you know it's a no. R, Nissan Skyline R thirty two Skyline GDR R thirty four, but yeah. So from so from thirty five. Is it from thirty fives or is it? No, all, no, all so, no. Thirty two, thirty three, and thirty fours are stock. Well, sorry, let's go back. Thirty ones, even if you arguably go back to the huck, huckle, 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 huckle. Oh, I got the name wrong. People are going to murder. But there is yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. how far back do you go before it's a Skyline GDR? Was it always been just a Nissan GDR and then a Skyline? Technically, it was first of all a Prince Skyline GTR, yeah, yeah. and then. 35s drop the Skyline, but you can still buy the Skyline with a non-turbo 3.6 or 3.8, and it carries a Skyline badge, but there's no GTR after it, mm. and it's real drive only. There you go. So, say that again. So, basically, 31s, 32s, 33s, anything from 31 yeah. onwards, the GDR is a GDR. We're up Skyline GTR, yep. There's a yeah, Skyline. 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 It's a Skyline GDR. GDR. Mm-hmm. But the 35s? It's just GTR. Just GDR. There's yeah. no Skyline. Nope. Okay. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, it's good to my page. There's a lot of people telling me that oh, I didn't know that either. Yeah. The, the, the people listening to us right now are saying, these guys, should they really be doing a podcast? <laughs> that's why we have Todd here. Yeah, that's he, it. He, we he don't know nothing about it. I don't know everything, though. JDM stuff, man. Jeez. <laughs> Anyway, if you're listening, tell us if those were genuine GDR. Now I'm second guessing myself, but they looked they looked pretty genuine at the academy. They looked pretty genuine to me. Um, I did notice he crashed one, mm-hmm. and then in the next shot, the next shot, like it was not crashed anymore. <laughs> so yeah, that's but that's, that'd be um, you've seen some of the, some of the back behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, they'd, they'd replicate that stuff easy. They're probably fiberglass bodies on just rolling chassis. Yeah. Running four cylinder motors. Solar. <laughs> no, no, I just noticed that in the one scene he crashed yeah. the car, and then they were looking as to why it crashed, and they couldn't find out why it was crashed, but the car wasn't crashed anymore. I was like, hang on, that fender was stoved in moments ago. But anyway, that's just another story. <laughs> it's a great movie. Yeah. Um, as I said, it's quite long. It's quite long. It was over over two hours. It's almost two and a half hours. But yeah, definitely go and watch it. It's worth worth a watch. And yeah, a lot of it's a mixture of CGI and real and real action as well. So 
I think it's definitely worth. Well, you'd probably need a bit. You'd have to have CGI being a computer game based movie, eh? Uh, yeah. So there's a lots of transitions in the movie where he's actually racing the race car, but in his head he's going back to when he's racing on on okay. um on the simulator. Yeah, on the simulator, and then you know it's the, the computer graphics that they do when they go that backwards and forwards is awesome. It's cool. really good. It's really well, really I good. Seen that. Yeah. 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 It just reminded me of something, actually, completely off. The, people listening to us think this guy's cooked. <laughs> but I was watching, do you guys watch the FIM Speedway at all on Foxtel? Oh, no. It has to be no. like clicking through and it just, I stop on it. It is awesome. Go watch it. Like those guys, they are nuts. They are nuts. They ha- but they have the technology now. They have this drone that follows them around the, around the oval. And they're just, it gives you a completely different, view on the on the racing in uh, FIM uh, Speedway. I was amazed. The Aussie did really well there. I can't remember where it was now, but yeah, it was a big a, following that, uh, that I couldn't that, believe uh, yeah, the that, crowd. That, 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 yeah. that series, yeah. The crowd was enormous. Like we You can't even watch it here. I think you gotta <laughs> no. go over race now if you want to watch that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. But this was like there would have been more people at that watching that than the Derby Saturday night. Mm. Come on. Man. There's more people that put Doran Garlands than, than Optus. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, they got 50, no, 51, 51,000 Saturday night. But anyway, that's another story. But, yeah, uh, uh, that, if, you, if you've got nothing to do, even go on demand and watch it. It's worth just the technology that they use to shoot it as well. The drone, it's an, obviously an automated drone that follows them around, but it holds, it stays back just enough to capture all the action. And you really pick up on the lines that these guys are using. They're, they're, they're pretty good, these guys. I was really impressed. Really, really impressed by that. Hey, um, NHRA, look, I didn't watch any of it. I was up watching NASCAR instead. Some people will shoot me for saying that. Yeah. I didn't watch, didn't watch NHRA. But congratulations to Erica Enders. She's won in pro stock. Uh, Bob Tasker in uh, Nitro Funny Car and Justin Ashley in Top Fuel. So congratulations to them. I'll try and catch up with my NHRA. I've been meaning to do so, but, yeah, there's only so many hours in the day to to yeah. do that. So Actually, going back to the, the GT stuff before, mm. yeah, did you see Renault Gracie? Uh, yeah, um, won the championship. Won yeah. her yes. uh, championship of four people. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to say she won a championship. She's doing really well. She was on Facebook and was, you know, glad to be back uh, in look, the race. Yeah. You know I mean? she's, she's, yeah. She's back and she's, but yeah, like you say four people at Wanneroo, I think she was the only competitor in that class. Yeah, the championship was yeah. out of four people. Yeah, yeah. I so, think, yeah. But, but look, because I was curious because she was celebrating, obviously, she'd won, and I'm, I'm thinking. We were at the race mm. that day, and I was I'm sure she ran, you know, the back of the field. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just trying to wonder, like, how what championship? So obviously, there's pro, am, pro am. Yeah. Then I don't know what. No. Then I there's think... amateur. Then there's pro am, and then there's another one, and then there's a GT trophy, which is the one. Yeah, yeah she. One. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, um, congratulations to her. I don't know what brings which, which door that opens for her. I don't think any at this stage. But maybe what we can say is <laughs> there's so many. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's normally me I'll just doing it. Yeah. I'll both say it. It opens some doors somewhere <laughs> yeah. for her. Now, congratulations to Renee. We wish her well. And, um, you know. I, I actually she, dare say credit where credit's due. Watch this space. She has the income to support yeah, for sure. future racing. Um, I reckon there will be... Well, there's still no doubt she's capable of Yeah, and that's I mean? the thing. She's doing showing... So it would be, it'd be interesting to see what she does going forward. Yeah, and uh, she even said today on her, on her Facebook that, you know, this is just the start of her getting back into racing. And I'm like, okay, look, maybe it's a good chance for her to knock the haters. You know what I mean? Yes. Is it the car that determines, obviously, the, her, her category, or is it the driver itself? I think it's the car, yeah, because yeah. I think that car is an older spec yeah, I think. Uh, older spec car as well. So, yeah, I, I, I do wish her well. It's interesting to see she achieved so much too quickly, in my opinion. In, she had, in yeah, V8? Previously, yeah, yeah. yeah. She got into a V8 supercar, in my view, way too young. 
Um, and I don't think she was ready for it. She would have been better off taking this path back then, you yeah, know, yeah, and yeah, she might sense. have been better off for it. Maybe that's what she's, you know, just yeah. trying to go back Did, and, and, and restart it like that. And I don't remember her doing much the Dunlop series either, or what are you going to call it? Junior series? Yeah, know. it was a Dunlop series back mm. then, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember her. I just don't recall. Yeah. She got paired with Simona de Silvestre. I remember I that. Think, I don't think that was a good pairing nah, either. It was... She needed to be with another guy because Simona was a different level to her. Yeah. Completely different level to her. And different Sim- driving style. Like, yeah, yeah. Completely, yeah. But Simona is the full, full, full deal. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Uh, whereas Renee, I don't think, had the quite had the experience back then and she needed to be with probably someone of i don't know of different so or you know someone that could have mentored her a bit better i don't think simona was that right person for her so it would have been interesting to see how her life closing what do they call it sliding, sliding doors, doors moment for her mm. if things had if things had gone differently for her i say that in sincerity i don't know oh. that in any derogative way i think she's very talented young girl and um just got yeah went down the wrong path in my view back well, then she could say she's gone down the right path in, now yeah you know what I mean? yeah, like, yeah maybe yeah yeah, yeah. 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 yep yeah. i don't know sometimes if her... you gotta go there, you know you gotta go hit that wall or whatever it is to find out you know yeah and that's obviously whatever she's done in the meantime to spark that back up mm. does she have a desire to go v8s so i don't know if she's um supercar sorry again um Apparently she's on another podcast talking about it, and I'll be honest, I've tried reaching out to get her on our podcast. Mm-hmm. I've had limited success at the moment. So. <laughs> You're sending the messages every day, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and no, I can't. No, I'm not cracking that joke because there has been some positive feedback, so I have to be nice in case this comes back to bite me in the ass. all right? Um, there has been some positive feedback that she may be interested, but in the short, that she enjoyed carding, she enjoyed the lead-up series that she did to get to the V8s, but then, yeah, again, I even I think she admits in the background that jumping into V eight was not the right idea, mm. and the politics. Well, let's be honest. She, her and Simona got a well. What would you want to go? Some, deal. What would, but in saying that, why would you want to go somewhere where you know they don't want you? Well, that's, let's be yeah. honest. They don't, yeah. they, you know what I mean. Mm. And that's the thing. That's why she got out as well. Mm. She knew she wasn't wanted, and she was so, the, the butt of all their jokes. Things, so. might, things might change. You don't. Know? Uh, yeah, she might this, this, wake them up. The sport is different now as well, but yeah, the sport is different. Like we've changed, the people yeah. have changed, the people that run it have changed. Well, they literally the administration has changed. There have been so many things that have changed since then as well. So I can't. What was the car she ran at Bathurst? And then I can't remember. It was a. So it was the Har- It was the Harvey Norman. Oh yeah, but she it, was one. She did one year with the Harvey Norman. Altima, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I was like, it was some not one of the she did Kelly. It, it, Kelly. Kelly ran that yeah, car, yeah. but Kelly she did a uh-huh. Falcon as well. She was in a Falcon for a short stint too, an FG, I think. I remember the Ultima. That's yeah, yeah. that was right. I could I could picture the car. I'm like, was it a Nissan? Was it a Mercedes? Was it a Volvo? You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we wish her well. Yeah. We, it's uh, great to see her winning the championship, especially in August. It's a early yeah. wrap up a championship. Hey, if if she steps up the car to a you know better car, a GT car, and then the GT this GT starts taking off, should be in the main category if the supercars goes to shit. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Again, <laughs> Johnny smiling and going, <laughs> <laughs> that, they've gotten to you, haven't they, Johnny? Nah, <laughs> it's, all, it's, still, it's like uh, how do you say it's that you know you. you I, I go to bed every night and I I put on YouTube and all I do is watch nineties mm-hmm. touring car racing. Mm, yeah so yeah. It's, it's that oh, you just don't want to let it go you want it to be you know uh you want yeah. it to be as good as it was back then but it's, it, it never will be but you just hope that something happens or something turns that there, there, there's a you know a spark that uh you know yeah. gets everyone back into it the way you know not it's never going to be the way it was but you know a lot more than than what it is now that's for sure we talk like i mean let's just take a my moment mm-hmm. there you talked about that 90s racing. I watched the video the other night on YouTube. It's the top 10 qualifying, top 10 shootout oh, the of 92. They're the best. You know what? They came out in my feed too, so they're probably targeting us. I know <laughs> the one you mean. 92 one. Did yeah. you see that now? Yeah, yeah. Well, talk about parody. We had VL Commodore. We had Sierras. Yep. We had BMWs. Yep. 
We had Glenn Seaton's EB Falcon yep. in there, and Peter Brock's VP Commodore yeah. as well. Now, how much? How much? Like we talk about parity, we had all these cars mm. in the top ten shooter. Now, admittedly, the spread was pretty wider, and you had the GIO Falcon. Uh, yeah, Skylines. that's right. Sorry, how yeah. could I forget? Yeah, yeah. two of them. Yeah. No, no, it was no. the Winfield one and the GIO one. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Scafi yeah. was in there, and Rowan Onslow and Mark Gibbs in the GIO uh, yep. one. Yep. yep. And you know they, all those cars. Was and was was it? It was Tony Longhurst in the Beamer, wasn't yep. it? Yep. Yeah. That the Bents yeah. and the Hedges. Yeah. Um, the Prime when they were in well, their Prime, I, I, the M3. Yeah. When did he get a Sierra? Must have been the year after, because he was in the. Yeah. Did he have a, before eighty eight? He was in a Sierra. Yeah, because he had the Sierra. Might have been Paul Morris in the Beamer, eh? Johnny, no, no, it was Johnny, Longhurst. Was it? Uh huh. I'm sure it was Longhurst. Because Morris did a stint. Well, that's in nothing. The... You, had, you had Morris there too wow. in, the, in the in the in the BMW. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who's that one's off. So I don't know if it's that microphone. Not right, yeah. See, I'm with you. See, Nick, Nick and I are with you as well, John. You're oh, like, oh, mate, yeah. that was awesome. But you know, I love watching, even the top. Just watching the top ten shootouts. Yeah, again. Like, yeah. Even some of the two thousand ones. That, that race. That was just yeah. Mm. Obviously, a Bathurst and that, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all recall the, the sound as well. Like you just did that 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 you know, like the start of our intro. Yeah. That, that sound it doesn't sound like that anymore no no nothing, no, nothing no. close no no I'm not saying we all remember the lap of the gods from uh, 06 yeah yeah in the okay. Kmart that's alright oh well, I yeah <laughs> <laughs> McLaughlin's beating it now you know. I, I know that but for the time yeah, that, was that, the, that yeah, car yeah. was just moving yeah it was yeah yeah it was a resurfaced track too oh, yeah God, yeah. I don't even hear any of that. moment. Uh, Andy Raymond and uh, Barry Sheen. Oh. Uh, oh, Mike Raymond. Mike Raymond, Mike yeah. Raymond. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's both of them, wasn't it? Mike then, isn't it? Mike, Mike Raymond. I don't yeah. remember. Andy, Andy Raymond. Was there an Andy well, I think, Raymond? Well, I think one was... Uh, I've got to check that. Because I think one might have been on the, on the ground and one was in the, oh, on the think, box. Yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah, and Doug, Doug yeah. Mulray. Oh, Doug Mulray. <laughs> he used to crack me up because even as a younger person... My old man would be like, Doug Mulray is a yeah, words I can't really say on air. Then yet he was commenting on the V8s, or the yeah. supercars at the time, or touring car. And I'm like, but my dad says you're a dirty old man. <laughs> you know, like, 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 just, my head couldn't get around it as a kid. It though. was, but. Hey, it was yeah. A, yeah, anyway. So, I did, about so like the other one I saw the other day was um, a very, very young Mark Knopfler. Um, from Dire Straits. No, not right. No, I'm um, thinking of. Oh. Anyway, with an EB and a VN at Bathurst, doing a lap by lap comparison of how the cars were. It was an FIA. Mark Osler. Mark Osler. Yeah, no, thank Mark you. Osler. How can you forget? Mark oh, Mark no, Osler. sorry. Oh, yeah. um, he was a legend. Yeah, he oh, was, and that, he was very, very, very young, and comparing these cars side by side. Where is Mark Osler now? He's still part of, uh, is it the, which magazine? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, Australia, uh, Australian Muscle Car. Muscle right? Car, yeah. 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 So that's that's all he's doing. He needs to be back on TV, that guy. Mm. I thought he was doing, I heard him the other day doing something for Shannon's. Yeah, he does. And then he does a I heard of him doing work. something for, I'm sure for TCR. I'm sure I heard his name. Oh, right. Hmm. He, was, he was at one of the TCR rounds just gone by, and I was like, oh, wow. And that's why I can't remember that name wrong, but. Noons Noons needs to be on TV as well again. Yeah, uh, Aaron Noonan. That's that's wrong that he's not on TV. Yeah, he's on SEN. He does the coverage for SEN. Yeah, but I, I tried to find that SEN coverage once and I couldn't find it. No, have you got the SEN app? Yeah, yeah, and it's not on no. there. I think okay. it was when I was at Wanneroo and I was trying to, I was leaving the track. I thought I'll, I'll jump on the coverage and I couldn't. Yeah, okay. I couldn't find it. It's an email so. for SEN. That one. Mm. Oh, there you go. Uh, we're not tangent there a bit. Or... We have, we have, but that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> are we going to try a new segment out? I don't know how this is going to go. This is a new segment. For those that are listening, tell your friends about our new segment. Maybe they'll tune in. <laughs> so we're going to do on this week in motorsport history. So every podcast, we will talk about things that happened in the on this during this week previously. So. On this week, in 1909, let's go back all the way back to 1909, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway was opened with a crushed stone and tar racing surface. There you go, Todd. 
Yeah, there you go. Oh, oh you're way, way oh, I'm back now. Sorry, yeah. I, was, I was outside. <laughs> <laughs> so that happened on this week in 1909. In 1944, during this week, uh, pro stock drag racer Bob Glidden, what an absolute legend of pro stock, a Ford hero amongst all Ford heroes. He was one of the greatest, I reckon, Bob Glidden. Uh, he was born in this week in 1944. 1945, Peter Brock was uh, born. Now, not our Peter Brock, uh, the American Peter Brock. Yes. He's a very famous man, this man. I, must say, I saw this in the notes, and I can bore you for an hour about Peter Brock. Tell us a bit about him, because I don't know a lot. I know he's a Nissan, Nissan he, or Datsun. Uh, he originally competed with a Datsun 510, mm, which is the right. two-door 1600 in America. Yep. Uh, Basie is famous for building a lot of aero parts and competing in their Trans Am series. Mm -hmm. And Can Am as well. And Yeah, and Can Am, but yep. mainly in 1600s, completely dominated in a four cylinder Datsun yep. against Camaros, Mustangs, like just dominated. Mm. Then put a 240Z and a 260Z mm -hmm. into the Trans Am series. Again, aero, his own built motors. Dominated. Um, his brother as well, I believe. I can't remember his brother's name now. He had a brother yep. that raced and designed a lot of these cars. Um, he's basically a living legend in America still, and for all the Dats and the aficionados in America, if you have anything BRE on your car, it's... Yeah. Hmm. Especially they used to call it the spook spoiler. There was a spook spoiler that used to go on the front of a Datsun 1600. Yep. Um, I don't know why it was called the spook, but... They are worth a fortune, and they look mint, and apparently they actually worked. Mm. This is this was an old brick, not quite Volvo spec, spec, but it was a brick of a car, and they added aero to it with a little spoiler at the front and some widened flares. Yeah, okay, yeah. If someone was here, he'd probably talk about it as well. A very famous man, this man in the United yeah, States. Yeah, built, built motors, yeah. Um, was actually involved, I, can, I know for a fact, was involved with 300ZXs that Simon and I have talked about before, mm. um, the Electro Automotive, Electric he was a bit of a precursor to that, but then separated from that, that field. But, of course, the Transit X went on to be, well, a rocket ship. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So he was born this week in 1945. 1946, just a year later, uh, F1 and sports car team owner Tom Walkinshaw was born as well. So much in the same vein as Pete Brock, but went on to do big... Uh, Big things in motorsport, really, in, in, in Formula One. Yep. And particularly here in Australia as well. And his legacy continues, even though he's passed on with his son, Ryan. 1964, in this week, top fuel dragster Doug Kalitta was born. Doug's still competing these days, Doug. No slowing down Doug Kalitta and the Kalitta family. 1966, Ken Miles was killed in this week in testing in River Riverside, California. That... Is actually depicted in his in the movie Ford, mm -hmm. the movie we were yeah. talking about earlier, Ford versus Very Ferrari. Sad. Yeah, yeah. So um, I did a little bit of research into that crash. You know, they've never really found the true cause of that crash. Needless to say, they don't believe it was his talent that that failed, or he it wasn't due to the lack of talent. It was a car <coughs> failure, but they still yeah. don't know to this day what it was. Hmm. So yeah, Ken Miles uh, passed away in 1975. I reckon this guy was equally as talented and as famous as Ken Miles. Mark Donahue uh, crashed um, in whereabouts was it? Yeah, the Austrian Grand Prix this week in 1975. This guy was, uh, as I said before, equally just as good as as uh, Ken Miles. Very talented, raced in Formula One. Very, very talented in Can Am as well. Did a lot in Can Am and. Um, was tied up quite heavily with the Penske team as well. Did a lot of development for Penske. So, um, yeah, he passed away this week in 1975. In 1987, look at that. First, second, third and fourth in the World Touring Car Championship race in Bruno were the Ford Sierras. Was it parody there? Or? I don't know. Yeah. What was going on there? First, <laughs> second, third and fourth. Ford Sierra. The World Touring Car Championship, same, 1987. Was that the same year the Sierras over here got actually disqualified from... Yes. Okay. What are you suggesting? Nothing. They had something Nothing. Nothing in all. Well, I look, to be honest with you, this is only two months before they came out to Australia. Well, there you go. So, maybe. It was the same year. It was Meh. August. For those playing at home... Um, what did they get disqualified for? Wheel arches, eventually. 
but initially yeah, it was... Yeah, for Bathurst. Yeah, it was the wheel arch. Officially, in the records, it was wheel arches. Yeah, but what was wrong with them? They were too... They weren't the right, the mandatory sizes, the wheel arches. I thought it was something to do with fuel as it well. It was. It oh. was originally. Originally, That's on the day, too. it was fuel, but then that was dropped. That was actually dropped. That protest was dropped, and then it was the wheel arches. So it had no bearing on the race. The pace of the car. I don't believe the fuel the fuel argument was able to be held. They needed to find something, I believe. So it was the wheel arches. Officially, it is the wheel they arches. They always find the something fuel. for Ford, but don't they? <laughs> don't you find that? <laughs> Haven't you found that? But I reckon they always have found something. They never find something when it's holding. Have, have you ever watched that race? Yes. Yeah. That's what have sticks you, in my memory. Yeah, yeah, Neil Crompton. Yes. He that's... left. He did. He left no doubt about it, did he? If you have you watched his commentary? Yeah. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that one now. Yeah, I've got it on VHS. He leaves no doubt that the when they tested the fuel that it was illegal. Because they tested it during the race. Yeah. Anyway, that's Neil Crompton's a lovely guy, by the way. But, but that's that's the, the, those are his words. He has done a podcast with the V8 sleuth, and it's a nice listen. Oh, the the one just recently in Ballarat? No, no, or, there was one. I've listened to the uh, a past one. Yeah, there was a past one. I don't know there's a new one. I've actually haven't listened to that sleuth through a while, unfortunately. No, it was a live I've, event. I don't know if they're releasing uh, it as a podcast. No, there was one. You know, I think it was actually during COVID, so it was a good couple of years ago. Yeah. And he did it from his house. Yeah, he and, did. I remember that. Yeah. And he mentioned this, the Sierras and some other bits and pieces. But yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> this week in 1988, Enzo Ferrari passed away, founder of Ferrari. And in 1989, I had to do something Australian as well. Andrew Medecki and Andrew Andre Bagnall uh, drove a Ford Sierra to victory at the Pepsi 300 at Oran Park, which is no longer there. How sad is that? Yeah, it's all housing now, isn't mm, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that was one of my favourite tracks. I never went there, but like the that's the bridge, yeah. Yeah, it's Oran Park, the bridge, yeah. right? Yeah, and yeah. in the last corners, that's left hander, and then as they go on the main straight, the camera they always. They always Staged that really well, so it was a left hander. Then, as they came down the straight, the camera shot was with the crowd in the background. And the the way it, it always looked like it was packed there, it always looked like thousands and thousands of people there at Oran Park. It probably was. Is the one I'm thinking of? My mate raced Oran Park back in the day when it was still running, and he said that wall on the left hander. The, yeah, it's the left hander's oh, yeah. a wall on the right. right. Yeah, he goes that wall comes up real quick. It does. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. one. He yeah. goes, it just, it's just there all of a sudden. And he yeah. goes, he reckons that everyone will give it a tap. Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah, gentle, was there either gentle or a hard tap, but everyone would give it a tap. Is that your friend Franz? Yeah. yeah, yeah and then you know yeah. it was there. <laughs> he did that in the Formula V, did he? No, no, he did it back in the day in, actually, 300 ZX, I think. He was oh, there wow. for a 300ZX track day. He'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he did a 300ZX around there, and he said that wall just, yeah. Gets you. He didn't tap anything on the day, but he reckons a few people did. Yeah, right, okay. And that's all I remember. And I saw the in-car footage from him, and I always wanted to get there, but oh, well, won't, won't now. <laughs> no, no, there's uh, lots, of, lots of places we're not going to get to. It's but... Airbnb probably can get there. Yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> You can stay right on the start-stop-finish line. Oh, yeah, great. And someone swimming pool. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, look, we'll bring this podcast to an end. Uh, we've got... Some special guests coming on in the next episode. We are catching up with Andy Kale and Mike Pearson. So Andy from Therapy on Wheels and Mike Pearson from Beat the Heat WA. Big race in October, racing for charity. Cool. Cannot wait for that. So we're having both of them on the podcast. They're going to tell us who we need to get behind. All the money goes to charity, but you've got to back one winner. You're going to back one winner. So will it be Beat the Heat or will it be Therapy on Wheels, the Mercedes Hellcat versus one of Mike Pearson's uh, Holden uh, or Chev LS-powered Commodores or Monaro? I don't know which car he's fronting for the event. They've got quite a few Beat the Heat. So we're looking forward to that, actually. Big charity event here in Western Australia. That will be coming up at the end of October. So we're catching up with them for the next episode. What are you guys up to? Well, Todd made a good suggestion. Uh, cars and Coffee. Custom, is it Custom Cars? Yeah, Custom on Cars and weekend? Coffee is on at Midvale. Again, oh, Midvale, yep, okay. Yeah, right so on. I'm probably going to drive the Evo out and mm-hmm. uh, go for a look because I had a bit of fun last time. Okay, all right. Yeah. 
Oh, no, I'm, yeah, I'm starting preps for all well, four days soon. Yes. We've still got all four days, yeah, first. First of October. October. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's not too far away. We're working on some new designs for some shirts as well. Oh, cool. So that would be Ford orientated. Oh yeah, which is yeah, pretty exciting because we haven't done a new design for yep uh, probably two years or so. So oh cool, we will celebrate uh, yeah at all four day, day and and release a new new shirt. Sounds good. Sounds good. Not looking forward to it. I need to get busy myself personally. Is oh you're up to Dingland. I am. I'm, <laughs> I am off to Dingland. But after that, I need to get before that and after that, I need to get busy on my car. Otherwise, I'm going to have no oh, car yeah, for another thing. It's, in, about that. it's in literally... I about that. Oh, I'm still taking it apart. I haven't even started the reassembly yet. I'm still taking things apart. Anyway, that's another story. So right. I need to get busy. Yes, but you do. Anyway, that's that's uh, that's how life rolls. All right, guys. Well, look, thank you for coming on. It's great to see you again. And uh, we'll catch you in a couple of weeks' time. Sounds good. All Thanks, right. Nick. Catch you, Nick. Thanks, guys. Take care.